So when I was 17, I was friends with slash sort of had a crush on this girl named Gloria. Wait, real quick. Yeah. Just FYI to our listeners because I just want to set them up. This is not a similar story to like what we just did with the Synanon series. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Very it different. It almost sounded like you're like, hey, very, I want to tell you a story. Yeah, very different. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm telling Liz this story. Yeah, this you is, Liz just, has not heard this story You guys story are before. just eavesdropping, which to be fair is actually pretty rude. But Liz is very scared of scary things. Yeah, I don't like them. And so scary. I have not told you the story until today. Okay. But I was friends with this girl named Gloria and kind of had a crush on her. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if you guys did this, but like when you were like young, this is more like a middle school thing for me, but I also kind of happened with this girl, is we'd like talk on the phone a lot, but then at school we did not really interact a whole lot. I feel like that was like a kind of common thing. Mm, I don't know. Um, but as the semester progressed, we kind of like, this was like my last year of high school. Um, we kind of got closer and closer. And then eventually like I'd stay the night at her house, but I wouldn't like sleep in her bed. Like nothing would happen between us. I would kind of just like sleep on the floor of her bedroom. And like, I mean, her parents were like not really around. But um, I remember one day she came to school and she had this like big pimple. And I was, you know, she was like, time to talk about it. And, you know, when it's, you know, if you're a guy, you kind of ignore when women talk about that kind of stuff. But it did get bigger and it did get to be quite large, to be honest with you, like the size of a quarter. And a couple of days later, I was, I'm actually, I think it was like about a week later, I was staying at her house, sleeping on the floor, and I woke up and it was the morning and she was screaming in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. And of course, I got up and like ran in there, thinking it's gonna be like my you know valiant knight in shining armor kind of moment. And the pimple had burst, and thousands of baby spiders were crawling all over her face. This is such a lie. <laughs> it's true. I, I want to say true. I called it you as didn't a call lie. It. I did. I've been shaking my head for like ten minutes because, by the way, also too long. I know your stories. That's not. You don't I know, know that story. I know the way you construct you don't know your about little me pranks. And Gloria. This is fake. This is fake. You don't know about me and Gloria. The spiders were real, Liz. No. Debunked. Hello, am I am I a podcast host or am I Dracula? <gasps> wait, well, oh, wait, real quick. Hello, Brace. Uh, I'm Liz. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes. yes. <laughs> F- you, yes. What is this? Every time, every time, I after the cold open start talking about something. You're always like, hold on, we have to introduce ourselves. Guess who started introducing himself, and then someone else tried to go somewhere else. Anyway, I'm Liz. We are, of course, joined by the scariest producer in Transylvania, Old Chomsky. So old, he was born in the Egypt times. And the podcast is called... Boo-Anon! Boo-Anon. You like that one, Boo-Anon? I thought about that earlier in our, during our interview. Uh, we, You know what? Uh, I want to get this out of the way first. Um, if you had purchased the Truanon... Halloween costume. Mm. Um, we're so sorry to anyone that was offended by that. I understand that it did look like a sort of not so great groups costume, but we were trying to do like a ghost thing and just want to say <laughs> I'm sorry to everyone who was offended by that. It was sort of just like uh, we weren't thinking. And the conical yeah. hat, it was kind of like a dunce, like you're a stupid ghost. And mm. you know what? Mea culpa. Mea culpa. That's nice. Let's have a little mea culpa together. Yeah, Ready? Yeah, yeah. Mea, mea culpa. culpa. That's true. <laughs> Wait, Brace, real quick. Yeah. It is the year 2022. Yeah. 2020 for- boo. <laughs> for you, because uh-huh. you do switch ems for Halloween. Yeah. Where you're either yeah. Austin Powers. Or Dracula. Or Dracula. Which which year is it? Is it- so it's a Dracula year. Interesting. But... You know what? We go on tour in like five days and there's no Dracula costume. So, Which is a perfect segue to say, you know there's still tickets available, Bruce? Oh, 
So great of you to mention that. <laughs> Only for three shows left. Philadelphia on the 3rd of November? I think I'm... You know what? You always correct me during this, and I'm always it right. It is the 3rd, yeah. Yeah, it's the 3rd of November. Uh, at the Union Transfer, there are still tickets available. Our second L.A. show on 11 16 2022 that's, that's the 16th of November there you go. uh at the Terragram Ballroom still tickets available and our final show of the tour at the Great American Music Hall in beautiful Scam Francisco uh, on the 26th of November 2022 there are still tickets available yeah also you should come to that one because that's the hometown show for us exactly that's that's our triumphant yeah, return we're going to burn the White whole Steeds. city down in fact i think uh the mayor is going to show up so I'm a little freaked out about returning to San Francisco. Why? Well, so when I was younger, oh no, here's no, I picture. was this wasn't in high school. This was like I was like early twenties uh, during yeah? this. You and Gloria, huh? No, it wasn't Gloria. This was Michael, but spelled <laughs> like Michelle, um, that I used to hang out with. Uh, we were doing, you know, like the farm near like Potrero. No. There's like a farm. They actually used to have punk shows there in the 80s, but there's like oh, a Oh, far- that spot? The yeah. like crazy industrial space? Yeah, no, but that was no, featured in. Yeah, yeah, but there's like crops yeah. and stuff over there. Yeah, yeah, but so, featured in the great series that Jan Chomsky produced earlier this year called Keep yes, the Dream Alive. Yeah, exactly. Yes, precisely. Um, also, home to, uh, I think, Target Video did used to have a lot of videos from there. Yeah. It's, but, you know, classic sort of spot, but there's a farm there. And me and Michael worked on that for like six months during the summer of like 2010. Right, right, the big crop summer. Exactly. And um, there was a scarecrow there that kind of, kind of just had like to, you know. To like scare to, the crows. No, well, yeah, but not only crows in San Francisco. It was more like to scare like crackheads and stuff like that. Mm. The crows of San Francisco. And Yeah, and you know, early 20s, you know, I was drinking a lot. Michael, also drinking a lot, kind of like not doing so great emotionally. And we kind of beat the shit out of this scarecrow. And uh, we beat it and beat it and beat it. Like, really, just like every time it was frustration at work, we'd take it out of the scarecrow. <sighs> I stopped working there. I was replaced by a guy named Jose, and he and Michael kept working there, kind of did the same thing. Jose would beat it, and um, I didn't hear from Michael for a couple weeks later that I think it was the next spring. And I went back to the farm. And uh, he he and Jose's skin was on the roof, and the and the, the scarecrow was was dancing up there. So I called the police, and he was arrested. I mean, it was a pretty big trial. I mean, it was the first scarecrow to ever be executed. Um, and we don't even have the death penalty. Except we don't have the death penalty. No, the police just <laughs> shot him. <laughs> it was really horrible. Oh my god! So. To our listeners out there who are like, what are these two jokers doing? Yeah. It's Halloween season, baby. Ooh, the autumn. And if you're listening to this months ahead of, you know, months in the future, yeah. which to you is now and we're in the past, which, damn, think about that. That's crazy. Wow. Um, it was Halloween when we were recording this. Yes, it well close enough. Time. It was Halloween, Halloween season. Time. The this, season. Do you have a favorite Halloween movie? Not of the yes. series Halloween, but in just in general. Um Practical Magic. What's that? What? Oh. With Nicole Kidman and Sandra Bullock. No. Sandy. Oh, it's classic. Does it pass the Bechtel test? It absolutely does. Then I'll watch and it. um yeah, it's very like I'm I'm less into spooky. I don't like scary, mm-hmm. but I love cozy. And so I, for me, the autumnal mood is more buttressed. Is buttressed better? <laughs> for me, With... the autumnal mood is buttressed better. <laughs> yes. This With... is a wild Liz episode, by the way. <laughs> just to preview films what's coming. That kind of, you know, help cozify. Mm-hmm. So, you know, me, I'm on the couch, I'm layered up, I'm in like 18 sweaters, I got all the thro- all the throws are thrown on the couch. Yeah. I've got like six mugs. Yeah. There's a pile of cinnamon buns, hot and toasty right out the oven. I've got, you know, 18 Meg Ryan movies. I've got Practical Magic. I've got jack-o'-lanterns outside, but they're not to spook. I'm there giving treats to the local children very gently and telling them their costumes look absolutely adorable. Interesting. So you I don't watch scary movies. Okay. Mine's cruising, because, like, what if Al Pacino was gay? 
Yeah, that's pretty spooky. Young Chopsy, do you have a favorite spooky movie? Uh, Scary October Eve movie, even? I don't really go for that kind of thing. Yeah, see? Okay, you guys are crazy. I love spooky movies. I don't like to movies. be scared. I mean, I, I'm other, a, I, I think I being a horror feelings. movie person is like very, too close to being a rockabilly person for me. Absolutely. You know, I don't. I would say The Shining. The Shining is your, this, yeah, is this good spook. That's a winter spooky movie, but I went to I'll, that place, I'll give it to you. To the place where they filmed it. To Overlook? I went to a place in New It's Paltz in Colorado, that, right? Yeah. I, yeah, then I, I went to it. Maybe just in the movie? I don't know. No, I went to it. I, I've been to a crazy, scary place in New Paltz that looked like it a long mm. time ago. Uh, I would say my. But they filmed it in the bottom of the Biltmore, where this is where they, which is in downtown LA, which is where they used to have the Oscars. Really? That's where the photo, I think, is from. Um, my favorite scary, actual scary movie, mm. gotta be. I'm also too scared. No, the ex. I don't know. Yeah, the I knew you were gonna say me. the Exorcist. When I was because my parents took me to see it when I was like 11, when I got re-released, mm. and then the lady peeing on the ground made me yeah. scared because I, I was that's like, a scary movie. Incontinence think... can come to children. Well, do you think age. that movie? Okay, which is scarier, Exorcist or Poltergeist? Never seen Poltergeist. <gasps> what? Yeah. Oh come on. I what? I it's scary. Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking of Paranormal Activity. I also haven't seen that, but that's oh no, that's the security that camera like, one. Yeah, yeah, that's the yeah, one yeah. they're like, oh my god, what if you saw like sh- crazy shit on the nanny it's cam? A Blair, and it's, it's like, a Blair yeah, Witch babies thing. are weird. Yeah, I know they're always talking and shit. Um, do you think babies can see ghosts? Fuck yeah, dude! I was talking about I, we were talking yeah, about we were this talking the other about day. This we babies baby. always are looking at ghosts, dude. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's ghosts. It's energy that they're understanding. I think their third eye and uh, plenty of other eyes are open. The soft spot on their head. And Once your head hardens up. it's a horrible civilization that yeah. forces it closed. Th- that's why I always do crazy shit in front of babies so that when they're yeah. older, they don't fucking, they're like, oh, that must have been one of those ghosts I saw. Totally, totally. Uh, classic prankster. Classic prankster. We're talking about all this and more with good friend Jack Wagner. Mm-hmm. He's got a new podcast out. Oh, he prefers if we say Jack Wagner, by the way. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he's, yeah. he's certain That's house respect. style. Yeah, he, yeah, house style is Jack Wagner. But yeah, <laughs> Jack Wagner um, <laughs> is, 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 is here to talk with us about what, Liz? Spooky, scary, paranormal, the absolute energy fields, the open-ended and confusing universe and how we make sense of it all. And I want to be clear, if you're skeptical, uh, skeptical, skeptical, you know the word I'm trying to say, skeptical about any of this stuff. <laughs> Brace is just trying to rhyme really like. If you're skeptical about it, <laughs> fuck, dude. I would be. The skeptical. The, honestly, oh, wait, the real scariest is thing is my, un- the skeptical. Yeah. My, the real <laughs> scariest thing is, you know, I did a conscious hip hop album in 2011, right? Oh my God. What was it called? Uh, Ethereum. No, it was called Erudite. Um, that was that was Erudite, the after conscious, the goddess of being skeptical smart. rapper, yeah, backpack yeah. rapper is very good. Um, no, but uh, if you are skeptical about any of this, I'm gonna be real with you. It is kind of sexist to be skeptical about this mm. stuff. I tr- firmly believe that. So even if you don't believe it, if you ever want to ever 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 nuzzle, if you want a little glory of your own, who by the way I made that up. Um, I, <laughs> no I, I wasn't talking to girls on the phone. Of fucking, I had a girlfriend. Come she come wasn't even in high face. school. That's crazy. What's up? Spiders coming spiders out of her face. Spiders coming out of her face. That's I crazy. put spiders on women's face. You know how people say you eat 25 spiders a year? <laughs> yeah, Who you thinks putting them in your mouth, <laughs> yeah, that's dude? You. I'm going in there every night. And you know what they call you? What? Little gin. What do they call me? <laughs> little gin. Little gin, exactly. Yeah, I put a little gin in there too. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I'm like... <laughs> All more, these like, references, you, you drink by the way, dear night? listener, all these references, they're going to make sense and more. Once you hear our great interview, which, by the way, if you say anything mean about me and what I think about the world on the internet, don't do that. Be nice. Yeah. And let's start the interview. <laughs> I first met Jack Wagner six years ago, on this very day, pre-Halloween. I was taking a stroll by myself, well, accompanied by my footman, through the spookiest cemetery in Los Angeles. The palm trees there had blackened leaves, fronds, really, and skeleton hands crawled from the ground in a goofy but creepy way. (laughs) As the day grew overcast and a drivel, drip, drip, drizzle started drizzling on my skin, 
making me wet and moist like a dew dropped, uh, dew dappled leaf in the morning. I began to weep, and then I looked down, and I was weeping blood. But also, the blood wasn't even my blood. It was the blood of the scariest ancestor that I have, Dracula. <laughs> All of a sudden, I heard a tap on my shoulder that I also felt, and I turned around, but there was no one standing there. And I realized it was actually somebody who reached their hand around me and did the trick tap. Thing. That's a classical move. And I turned around, and Jack Wagner was standing there, <laughs> oh completely naked. Also dappled with dew. Not in a state of tumescence. And I said, Jack, so nice to meet you. My name is Brace. And he said, I already know that. <laughs> the goblin told me. <laughs> and soon, in so many three years from now, you and Liz and young Chomsky will start a podcast. And three years hence from then, I shall return atop my witchy steed. And join you. Welcome, Jack, to the podcast we have with wow. us today. Jack Wagner, descendant of the famous Nazi composer himself. That is not uh, true. Okay, but. Yeah. Well, that's what I, you know, that's, you know, two sides to every story. And the host of Other World Podcast. Yeah, Other World. Simply not Other World. Not Other World Podcast. Just yeah. Other World. Podcast. But, the, but the, it the is handles, a podcast. It is a podcast. It is a podcast. Thank you for that introduction, Brace. I have, um, I thought about how funny it would be if like, you know, the pod's going well, I've been developing goodwill with the audience. I thought it'd be so funny if I just completely ruined everything yeah, going totally. for me, but I started reporting like stories about jack-o'-lanterns and Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, like guys, werewolves. Yeah. You won't believe well, it. Last okay. night I saw ooze dripping down my wall. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a question about that actually, because, well, we should say first off. Welcome. We're so excited to have you here. You Same. have a new podcast out. It's such a delight mm -hmm. and such a fright. Ooh. And I'm going to be doing a lot of those during our spooktacular episode mm. that we're doing here. But seriously, folks, uh, when we talk about the supernatural, we aren't talking about Frankenstein. We're not talking about Dracula. We're not talking mm. about werewolves. Okay. Right? Well... Yeah, sure. But I do think that there is like some like I, yeah, I want to clarify yeah. then what we're actually talking about when we talk about the super when, when we're in the supernatural space. Uh huh. Which your podcast occupies. Mm -hmm. What are we really talking about here? I mean, I kind of like I say my so my podcast is all firsthand encounters, and when I ask people for these stories, I say something paranormal, supernatural, or unexplained. So basically, like, what I cover is really anything that's sort of outside of the be the bounds of, I guess, current scientific explanation. Um, mm -hmm. And I guess outside the bounds of, like, what a normal journalist would be able to report on and fact check. Yeah. You know, something that just doesn't quite fit, but from a person, like an eyewitness that I trust, and usually stories that come down to okay, either this person is just lying to my face and they're an mm. in incredible liar and also an amazingly creative person, you know, <laughs> and story. That's usually how I know people like aren't lying is like, all right, if they're making this up, they should just write a book because they would be Stephen King level yeah, storyteller. Yeah. Um, but yeah, either that or they're not crazy and they saw this and what happened, you know, or maybe, mm. maybe something that will eventually understand down the road, but so I know that's kind of broad, but that's, I guess, the closest thing that I can in defining this. I don't understand any of it. Um, I'm definitely not an expert. I want to say that right away. <laughs> I'm not an expert at all. I'm just, I, you know, the podcast is about firsthand experiences. So I'm not a historian of this stuff. Like, I'm not, yeah, it's not one of those podcasts where I just read wikipedia pages or whatever yeah totally <laughs> like um i don't want to ramble too much but i've always been interested in this stuff and i've just never been able to listen to or watch anything that covers it because it's either somebody reading wikipedia or mm. like it's just not filtered enough they have like too many people on that are clearly mentally insane yeah it's you know i don't I don't want to write people off, but like sometimes it's just very obvious, even submissions I get. Um, 
or they're just taking so much that it's like, you know, they're not, they have no discretion with it to the point where it starts to sound like fiction. Yeah, you're totally. Listening, you're listening to it or watching it and like, oh yeah, this is fiction. Even like some of the, the ones that I do like recently when I'm listening to it, I'm like, oh yeah, like a lot of this is just made up. It's like a mm. storyteller mm -hmm. and it's sort of accepted as storytelling. You know what I'm saying? Where it's sort of like one of those yeah, where it's like it's oh, a true story, pasta. but it's like tall, t like a tall tale. But right, right, yeah. right. For me and probably you guys, when I hear stuff like this at the end of the story, it's never the end for me. I just have a million more questions. Right. Yeah. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do. I mean, there's so much, so many of the kind of like narrative shows that cover a lot of these sorts of stories, whether they're like firsthand or retelling historical events or whatever, whatever, like you're saying, reading Wikipedia stories. Um, like the production on it can be so corny and it can be so yeah. heavy handed that it that it even adds to the sort of like the the dramatization of the whole thing. And it makes it seem even more ridiculous than sometimes some of these stories already feel because they're they're so difficult to believe that people could be having these experiences. And so I think like on your podcast, you know, you have people come on and basically tell these firsthand experiences that they've had with these, like like you say, unexplained phenomenon. And what's great is that you get to kind of hear it from these people's mouths, and it isn't kind of like mediated by some yeah, sort yeah. of like theatrical production or whatever. And so you can really like, I mean, I'm sure you do, like you say, a lot of filtering out of like, you know, telling, you can tell when some of these are like these tall tales or these like ridiculous kind of stories. But I do think it's very affecting to hear just so many different people that have these very strange experiences. And so I'm wondering, can you like maybe walk our listeners through before we kind of get into sort of unified theories about the supernatural? Because I know mm -hmm. Brace and I have some that we want to run by you. Like, can you just walk us through a little bit of maybe like some of these kinds of stories that people are coming on and talking about? Okay, well, it's all over the place. Um, I obviously get a ton of ghost stories, mm. um, haunted houses, almost too much, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, a lot. Of, where, I mean, Jack. To be fair, a lot of people have died. Yeah, it's 2022. We've yeah, got I centuries mean, of I, I, I would say. I, I mean, I, I, I might have to get fact checked on this. Pretty sure most people who've ever been alive at this point dead. So obviously, there's a ton of ghosts, dude. Don't be a yeah. dick about it. <laughs> I mean, so a lot of those. I mean, my favorites are the ones that are kind of in between in a way that's just yeah. like. Um, I mean, okay. So the first episode is about this woman from Australia. Um, and her nephew, actually, her nephew moves into this house. He's like forced to move back to the family farm where like all their cousins kind of live. And like, you know, basically it's like this in the middle of nowhere. And on this big piece of property, all the aunts and uncles and so forth have houses kind of in like a, almost like a, you know, an old family plot of land. Mm -hmm. And um, he, him and his friends hear like footsteps walking behind them when they're going up the driveway and they get kind of spooked, but they mention it to their aunt. And then all of a sudden he hears all these wild stories from when she lived in the house. And one of them, the wildest, one, like the, the wild one she tells me is that they're coming home and they like, basically this white orb light like opens up in the street. That's the best way I could describe it. It's about the mm. size of a person. And she says it's this really bright white light. And inside there's like this guy dressed like a gentleman, she says. Mm. The whole family sees it. And she describes his limbs as being broken. He's kind of like, the way I understand it, sort of like a marionette laying on the ground or something. <gasps> but she sees this man and like they're about to pull in their driveway. It's like in front of their car. Her kids are like two years old and she's like, mommy, what's the white man doing? Her husband Respect. sees it, bolts out of the car, which is the funniest part. He bolts into the house and later she finds him under the covers, like whimpering. So Ooh. she... This man abandons his family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like, maybe the most like, shocking event. No, 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 no. Like, so she is, I mean, it's a funny story too. She's telling me and she's like horrified, but also like immediately distracted because she realizes her husband is a coward. Yeah. And it's like a relatively new marriage. So she instantly is distracted. Like she has to get her kids into the house because she doesn't know what's going on. Then she confronts her husband for being a coward. Like what, what you just left us? He goes and under then, the covers? Yes. And then, and it's like, it's like, yeah. And being like, nothing happened. I didn't say anything. Nothing. There's nothing out there. Mm. 
Mm. And so she goes back out and the guy's still there. He steps out of the orb, kind of turns into something else. And then he goes back to being a human form, sort of like, sh- the way I understand it, he kind of like shakes. And then he's like fixed. Ugh. He's not broken anymore. She kept calling him the broken man. And then Ugh, that's he's so standing there. Poetic. She says that he seemed embarrassed. He had like an <gasps> embarrassed look on his face. Well, his limbs are hanging from it. I mean, yeah. he's all dangle wingle. Like, that's you pretty weren't embarrassing. supposed to see me like this. Yeah. And then he took off running okay. into their property and kind of just disappeared. Mm. And then, but get this. So she tells this to her, her grandma, who's still alive living on the property. And she's <gasps> oh, like, no. Oh, that sounds that sounds like Murray Jacobs. That <gasps> sounds like Murray Jacobs. Um, that was like my husband's friend. He used to come over every day after work. He lived on the street. They would come over and they would have some drinks, and then he'd go to him with his family. And during the Great Depression in Australia, he jumped off a building and killed himself. Broke all his limbs. Broke all of his limbs. <gasps> and oh my god! I I know this sounds like this probably. It, it's such a good story that sounds like a tall it's tale, a great but story. I mean, yeah. it's a, this woman telling me it, and it's very vivid. There's witnesses. And um, well, you know, they anyway. say that experiences with the supernatural or the unexplained, like that, a lot of those experiences are there for us to like reveal something to us, or for us to yeah. kind of come to understand something. So I feel like she really found something out about her husband with that situation. That oh, maybe right. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what I that love about the, the whole point doing of this. <laughs> yeah, like I'm not, I'm not like a big like oh let's get scared type of guy, but. When I started doing this, I started doing this kind of by accident, but what I found is that I just really like these stories because there's usually some element in it that adds a whole different spin. Like for for that story, it's the the husband part, right? Like that's what makes it a good story to me where it's like, oh my God, this, they, I mean, they get divorced over this. (gasps) Really? (laughs) She leaves him. Holy shit. She leaves him because he was a fraidy cat? Because of the broken man. Dude, can Can you you imagine? How do you tell your friends? If you married a guy and she has a a newborn baby in the car, he dips. Yeah. No, but how do you imagine? I mean, it's tough to come back from that. Imagine And she has to, she has to walk the kids inside while this ghost is standing there. So she has to get them out of their car seats and like carry them in the house. women are very strong. Yeah. They are. Um, So there's that. Then I do one with a woman who I think she doesn't know what it is, but she basically receives these messages that turn out to be from recently deceased people. And they want her to pass on a message to their family member. She mm. didn't know that that was the case. She just thought she was seeing crazy stuff. But like yeah, each time she feels really, as she says that she feels physically uncomfortable until she tells the ter- person. Mm-hmm. But each time it's... um. It's been a specific message for them, and like the person. And they understand the message. Oh, very clearly. (gasps) But interestingly enough, she um, she still doesn't quite like. She doesn't know the terminology, and those are my favorite type of people too. Where like, yeah, yeah, where they don't even know, like they don't know the words. Yeah, because it's like it's so honest. They're just trying to explain this thing that's happening. Something that like you're familiar with, but Mm. they don't know what it is. So. I mean, like she's describing something appearing in her third eye, basically, but she doesn't have like you know. She doesn't know about this stuff. So that adds to she, it. And she's not familiar with the chakras, yeah. A little bit, maybe, but like not. She still doesn't know what's happening to her. But that was one. I do one about a jinn, which is like an yeah. Islam, oh. Islamic. Yeah. Like I, I've heard kind of, it's just like a soul. Some people look mm. at it as like, I'm, it's pretty universal. Like you do not mess with this. But um, yeah, it's kind of like from what I was told by this person, like, there's just jinn everywhere living in like another dimension. Basically there's like families of jinn. They're like souls. Mm -hmm. They're bigger than us. I don't know. Um, So have you yourself had any experiences? A little bit. What, what kind of like got you involved in this? Um, I don't know. I always like, (laughs) I mean, I did, I tried to do a documentary on it when I was like 15 because there's like a haunted theater in my neighborhood where the bands would have, shows and I just always heard like oh the place is haunted and I had to do a video for like a school project so I tried to do a documentary on that and that was sort of interesting but also I got scared what, <laughs> so was I, it what is it was it a venue for straight edge hardcore bands there there was a lot of different it was one of those where it was like every single child band would play at this place you know mm. gotcha um, oh like local bands yes yes um I don't know how many big ones came through 
But yeah, so I kind of got scared off by doing that. I was sort of like, uh, I don't want to mess with this stuff. Um, but then my mom lived in a house that we think is haunted. It wasn't scary, but I'll, it's not that interesting, honestly, in comparison mm-hmm. to my other stories. But it was weird. I think I maybe told Brace about this. Essentially, we had all hear somebody making food at night in the kitchen. And I just, I think we all assumed that it was another member of the family. Mm-hmm. Ugh, but classic. then until we had like a conversation where everybody was like, no, fuck no, I never go in the kitchen. Ugh, that's, like a a gr- dark- that's a cinematic moment of like, that's not it was me. Scary. I didn't then, do it. You didn't do it. Yeah, Everyone's then, pointing at each other. And then my mom had, I mean, she lived, like I would only visit, but she had had more severe experiences. Like she came home and um, every single drawer was opened. <gasps> like she thought somebody broke into the house. Like it was pretty, it was honestly horror movie vibes. It sounds like the plot of a movie. I guess like the kid, kids in the neighborhood would be out in the yard a lot. And she's like, what are you doing? And they, I guess she realized that it's like a house, you know, like people in the neighborhood know about it. Oh, uh, really? Like oh, story. Yeah. yeah. So, but I don't know. It was never like, um, does it she never still felt- live there? No, she moved. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's Liz, probably Do you good. remember the abandoned, uh, what was it? I think the VA hospital in San Francisco. Oh Yeah. Uh, when we were younger, we all used to, uh, Jack, there was a, there was like a big old abandoned hospital in, in, in SF that was like, obviously, uh-huh, you know, classic. abandoned hospital, very scary. Uh, my friends and I used to go there a lot. I did not like going there yeah, that's because crazy. Mm-hmm. I thought we were going to get mm-hmm. in trouble because I heard a rumor that there was motion sensors on the, the fences and my friend did get arrested there. So I was like, mm, I don't really like this, but there were spectral motion sensors. Exactly. Well, Dude. I had my, some of my friends would go down there and like lock themselves or not lock themselves, but like put themselves in like the morgue things and stuff like that. What? Oh my God. Yeah. No, that's no, that's thank you. Psycho. Dude, psycho stuff. I just smoked that's... a little ganja. That is one thing I do not do. I still don't know like what I believe about any of this stuff, but that's a lose lose situation to me. Like, hey, there's and no even that if that ghosts adds, aren't real, dude, you're in trouble in that. No, that adds yeah. to that. That's like even more back to like the TV shows and kind of like why I made Otherworld is like mm. all of the shows about it that are like reality. First of all, they never find proof. How could they? Yeah. They have like a huge fucking camera crew. It's like that's not the circumstances I think you would find it, but. The other thing is that they're in like, they're behaving in a way where it's like, if you believed in this stuff, you would not be doing this. Absolutely. Like you clearly do not believe in it. You're going in the worst place in the world and yeah. acting like a dick. Yeah. It's also just disrespectful. Yeah. It's like, like you, I must, just think... you must not believe. Right. right? Well, like, but also you don't why fuck with you? that kind of shit. Like, I just think like if there's even a little inch inside you that has doubt that maybe this, you know, we can talk about the layers of that. We should in a second of like, mm-hmm. whether it's ghosts, whether it's spirits, whether it's jinns, whether it's mm-hmm. other dimensions, whether it's past lives, whether it's future lives, whatever, whatever. Like if there's just like the tiniest, tiniest little bit of you that is like doubtful that maybe some of that does exist and that we're not kind of just floating alone in this world and that's all there is, then like don't be disrespectful Don't be rude to, like, all of that energy. Like, treat it with, like, you know, be nice. Don't go fuck around in a morgue and, like, lock yourself in. That's not, you don't mess around with this shit. And, Brace, we're not criticizing you, but, like, there's a lot of people that But maybe your friends. Well, listen, no, 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 no. Hey, listen, I... I, I'll never lock my ass in one of those fucking things. I don't want to get locked in anything. I'm not... It's not even about the ghost. We're anti-locking it. True nun tip. Never lock yourself in something. But I will say, Liz, counterpoint. It's true that you should respect it, right? You know, and treat treat this with some some gravitas, you know, if you believe in ghosts and all that kind of stuff. On the other hand, I do find many ghosts themselves to be disrespectful. Oh, yes. I mean. Well, that's the classic prankster ghost. Exactly. I think there's different types. There's a lot of those, though. But and so, I do think that that is a ghost right. Interesting. So you think yes. it's okay for? I mean, I guess they're bored. Once you've moved on, yeah. and yet have not moved on to the second, because okay. so you're kind of yeah. in limbo, right? That's mm-hmm. sort of the idea with ghosts. They're in limbo. It's like yeah. perhaps that you got to work out the prankster, the prankster options. It's like you have this opportunity. I mean, look, I'm imagining Brace as a ghost. Oh, I'd be so good at it. First Are of you all, crazy pranks constantly. I, oh my god! And starting with the smallest. I mean, we're talking about Mr. Gaslight here. I mean, this would be. I eat every sock in your house. It would I'd be go crazy. incredible. Hey, you know what? I'm actually looking forward to it. But 
well, you have to kind of exhaust <laughs> the prankster energy. The, that's why I think yeah. the ghost has to exhaust the prankster energy so it can move on. That's like one. Part my of whole thing on. is this. Let me tell you guys. I mean, maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves here, but let me tell you guys my theory on ghosts. Okay, let's get okay. into it. You know how in ghost shows and stuff like that, they're always trying to like get the ghost to come out because you know, like, like be like, oh, here's like a letter from your, you know, your beau who died before mm. he come back from the civil war. You know, I do think there is something to that. You have to make a ghost feel some kind of uh, intense emotion in order for mm. it to become corp- corporeal, corporeal, mm-hmm. Corpor- mm-hmm. the to become a more real. Um, and so you can do that by like pissing it off, by making it horny, by making it laugh, by making it angry, by feeling those... an intense emotion. Exactly. Yes. However, what a lot of these ghost hunter shows, hunter in name only shows, do is they don't understand is that at that point you draw your weapon and you fire. You can <laughs> and you can shoot a ghost at that point because they're more real than they were. Yeah, that doesn't make they're any visible. Sense. I, it I doesn't was make with sense you, to you right up. At, I, th- I feel you like you were really it, on a good track there. If you then... believe it, though, I'm telling you, a lot of it is about belief. And if you believe it, and that ghost sees that you believe it, and that you drawing that 38 special line on those fucking. Line those fucking sideposts up and just blasting that motherfucker. That that, that ghost will not bother you anymore. Do you, you can think shoot that ghosts. All ghosts are evil. No, but I'm saying is you need to get ghosts out of this realm into the next realm. I could tell that Brace is talking about a child ghost. A, no, this a is a, girl. another ghost of a, a warrior. I'm talking about. This is only for other warriors. Wow, he's ghosts. been in the lim- in limbo for a while. Exactly. Then. Yeah. Well, there's warriors still <laughs> born today, even. Okay, but in all seriousness. Yeah. What is your what is what's your theory on the supernatural? Like, do you believe in this stuff? I, yeah, I originally wanted to go through and have you see what you Let's guys do think. That. Like, Let's, where do you that. Stand. Let's do okay. it. Let's okay. do it. Let's do it. Like, ten Let's do a is, little lightning round. Ten is complete belief. I would say mm-hmm. okay. Ten is complete belief. Like, mm. you couldn't as as much as you believe in gravity. Like. It's not even. Well, you don't have to let's think not about assume it. anything. Okay, yeah. I got All some right. questions sure. about gravity. I will believe okay. it when I as see sure, it. As sure as you know. Okay, zero being it's completely made up, one hundred percent fiction. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Yes. I am going to forget what these numbers stand for, and I'm just going to tell you my All opinion. Right. Zero, okay. Liz. Zero. <laughs> we'll start with ghosts. Ricky Gervais style skeptic. Uh, Ten. Mm. Literally any woman in the world. I believe. See. Level. Okay. Fedora. Zero. Yeah. But. Joshua Tree, 10. Yes, exactly. Precisely. Okay, okay that's fine. I understand yeah. the scale. Okay, let's start with ghosts. I'm going to be very general. General, ghosts, general, 10. General, ghosts, 10. You believe in ghosts? Yes. Okay. I'm going to go with a six. Okay. You know what? You know what? I'm I'm neutral, five. Um, this, let's go. This man's a centrist. Sasquatch. Sasquatch, interesting. We did an episode on Sasquatch. We did. I can't oh, remember yeah, what I did. said about that. Was, I think it was a Christmas episode. I think my Sasquatch belief is at a seven. I'm giving that. But wait, do we differentiate between Sasquatch and Bigfoot? Or is that the same thing? Yeah. Are we, is Sasquatch, Bigfoot, same? I thought they were the same. A Yeti is not the same. Oh, a Yeti is not the same. You know what? Blanket. I think we covered this on the episode. We did, I believe. But that okay. was, you know what? That was like two years ago. Okay, I'm going to say Yeti, eight, Sasquatch, five. Okay, I'm going Sasquatch, okay. zero. That motherfucker's fake. I would have encountered him. I spent a lot of time in various woodland True. places. I just think the Americans uh, would... Ch- I'm going Yeti, 10. Yeah, Yeti's definitely... Okay. That's a Yeti, hard. 10. Yeah. Yeti... I think... Definitely. I don't, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole of Sasquatch, but I I do love those stories. And also for me, that that's kind of an easy one because I think it's very possible. Like if Sasquatch had existed, like the laws of physics wouldn't be altered mm. or anything. Yeah, yeah you know, totally. Like, it's just like, like a big it would be, thing. Be like, okay, there's like a new primate. Yeah, it's just it's like, like, oh damn, that's I mean, that I mean, we bigger we than didn't, a bear. We didn't discover the gorilla until like the early nineteen. 19- 19, early 1900s, it was like formally discovered by the yeah. Western world. They didn't Which, know the Wait, wait I hold mean, up. What? <laughs> yeah. I mean, dude, that's like an, a good example I used. They use, just that, found like, out about gorillas in the West? In er, early. And mind you, I'm not a historian. I might be like uh, off by a little bit, but it's a good example I like to use that, what? you know, the British colonizers would go over there and hear stories. Like the African people were like, yeah, there's a gorilla. Yeah, like, no shit. The gorillas yeah. exist. <laughs> and like, like I we we so. see them all the time, and they are like, yeah. oh yeah, these these savages are you know making stuff up, you know, yeah, like yeah, this is just yeah. rumor, blah blah blah. I see, and that's how we treat people that live. Yeah, it's in, interesting. And know, now it's just rural normal. Western so. areas that yeah. say they've seen Sasquatch. 
I, I mean, mean I, I'm gonna be real with you. If there was a Sasquatch, I would have got you know. Wait, I, Bigfoot I gotta, is the California one, and Sasquatch is Canadian, I, right? I, I think so. That seems right to me. But I gotta say, I've encountered a couple of Sasquatches in my time, mm. uh, particularly. Beauty Bar, like 2011. Hey. You know, I gotta tell you, <laughs> hey. I wish I, feel I hadn't like seen Northern him. Canada's got some very dark, there's probably, deep, dark yeah, secrets there's, up there's there. Some, there's yeah. some up there. I will say this: if you told me there was a Sasquatch living in the northern provinces of Canada, like in the far north, yeah, right? way up there, middle, where the real Yukon. U.S. Russian war is happening, exactly. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, why not? So, you know? yeah. How about, um. UFOs mm. visiting Earth, and and by UFOs I mean alien intelli- oh, intelligent life. You're we're breaking some true and on rules here, but true and on rules are meant to be broken, not true. That's because that's the exception that proves the rule. Exactly. So we're exceptioning that proves the rule. Right you here. said that we would never talk about aliens on this show, although we I'm did sorry. do a and very I know early. It, we won't get we won't get too episode. deep on it because as soon as you get into like the government aspect of it yeah. and the releases it gets really complicated but do you think I'm, I mean there's I'm all sorts of types like, I'm going so okay wait all sorts let's of start, types let's start with this, this do you think that there's other life outside of earth yes 10. 100% 10 okay 10 do you think that at any point the other life forms have either contacted us or visited in any capacity have they been eight. to earth 8 I'm gonna say okay. 8 okay well, well wait 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 I'm going to say six on physically been to Earth. What? Okay. But I'm going to say eight on, like, communication. Okay. Wow. I'm going to say, you know what? This is one I've grappled with for a long time. But we're talking real aliens, right? Not, like, other dimensions? No, real aliens, like Blorbos. Like greys. Yeah. yeah. Well, although... Because I want to. If you get deep enough into it, I think it might be. It's like the same thing, right? When you kind of like get that far. Well, we can talk about it. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna say. I refuse to answer this question. What? No, you got to answer the question. All right, I'm gonna say. Gut feeling. Zero. Okay. My God, this guy. That's fine. This is the you're running under the covers right now. That's fine. We're witnessing oh, uh, believe it right me, here. I, I'm. You know what? I just started. I just started reading this book, Dreamland, about mm. UFOs. It's really good. Okay. Um. So we'll see if I change my mind after I get past the first chapter. That's the okay. So as a person who's reporting this stuff and like I'm hearing these stories like back to back to back, every single topic, I'm like. Fuck no! I want this to be not a part of my life. I'm n- mm. not going in person to anything haunted. Totally. I'll actually I'll make an exception, like because I've thought about this a lot. Like I really am not down to go do this. It's not. It's a lose lose for me. Like if it's yeah. real, lose lose. Um, the only exception is if somebody really needed help, and I was like able to bring somebody to help them. I would probably do that. But that's the only exception. But I wouldn't go for fun. But so I was saying. All of it, I'm like, fuck no, I want it, nothing to do with it, yeah. except for UFOs. I would love to see a UFO. Well, That's Walker, the only thing. You, you guys know my buddy uh-huh. Walker uh, from hardcore band Crazy Spirit. Uh, he fucking, he saw a UFO dead sober like a few months ago, I think. What, what, did, what wow. did it look like? In uh, upstate. Um, mm. He described it like a bunch of lights in the sky moving in a mm-hmm. way that was not physically possible interesting and like he was yeah. like it, i and he was he, he even I gotta talk to him about this cut me off and was like it wasn't a drone like it yeah. wasn't a drone yeah drone technology and has really fucked with it, our like, ability to talk and think about UFOs. everybody else there was i think like on acid and except for him mm. that sounds awful yeah <laughs> but but oh yeah yeah and so but he was the one who saw it yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so interesting. i don't know but you know i i believe him so I don't know. I don't know mm. where that puts me on the spectrum. Now I'm really like thinking about my question about, you know, if we def- like how we want to talk about what UFOs are or aliens are. Like, do we mean other dimensions? Do we oh, mean We don't know. And or- maybe it's all one the same. That's you know? what I'm saying. I mean, I think maybe if we want to talk about the absolute, we can kind of talk about And that's the that crazy stuff, thing. But- like, I don't want to go. I told Brace that my notes, if you saw them, would look like I took DMT and like had <laughs> a manic experience last night and just scribbled mm-hmm. stuff down. But um, yeah, I've just been, you know, I, I pretty much 
listen to any interesting story I get. And what's weird is that, you know, they're from all different cultures and then you start to see little patterns between yes. them, you know? I love that. And only recently have I gotten to like some places where I'm like, oh, this might be something that kind of connects it all. Like there might mm. be, and you know what? Like, I don't think this needs to be magical or scary. Like, I think the exciting thing to me is that maybe one day we'll learn something. We'll, we'll kind of start to understand this stuff and maybe this won't be scary at all. Maybe it'll be just normal if we understand it. I you think know? it would, I think it would still be scary. It'd probably still be scary, <laughs> but <laughs> maybe, okay, maybe it'd be scary, but yeah, I think well, if you were like, Hey, Brace, actually aliens are actually extra dimensional beings that are coming here from using technology and really something beyond even the scope of what we would call technology to visit us. I'd be like, yeah, yeah it's definitely scarier than the spaceship thing. Yeah. yeah, That's definitely scarier than that. You know what freaks me out? I, this just popped in my brain, uh -huh. just when we're talking about scaries, is like, I think the idea of the universe being a simulation is like the most absurd thing I've ever heard in my entire life and is so like narcissistic projection on a level yeah. that I can't even, I, that I can't identify anything with, uh -huh. right? But it trips me out that some of the like richest craziest like scientific techno capitalists in the world like have devoted their entire life to proving that that's true and they believe in it like so much yeah in, that gives me pause <laughs> you know i what don't I mean? think it's like yeah and i don't know i'm not a simulation person i think that's like yeah, yeah narcissistic like why would if it was like a matrix type situation it's like why yeah totally. we, we believe kind of, me like we, we have spent time in a simulation before yeah. mostly involved us getting chased by 11 year old boys <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> You don't remember F Femboy Hooters? Oh, you mean in the metaverse? Yes. Yeah, oh, that's my such. God. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't think so. But, I mean, there's definitely some stuff I'm working on and exploring. It'll come on later in the show that might be uh, things that I barely even understand. And that's kind of what I was mm -hmm. talking about with the CIA documents, Brace. Mm -hmm. is like, and Liz, I think you might be interested Um yeah, let's talk like about the those. gateway process. So, what is so? Can you explain to our listeners what this is—the gateway process? Okay, I'll I'll try my best. This is new. T this is sort of new stuff to me, and mm -hmm. it's. I'm also going to avoid spoilers that will like ruin my episodes when they come out. But this will be well, part of the show later. And so, anyway, the gateway process in 1983, the U.S. Army, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. was conducting these experiments. You've probably heard some version of this. It, they've tried it a few times throughout history to kind of use psychics for warfare. And this was not psychics, um, to be clear. They're trying this to is use, something different. They're this trying is, to use um, mages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're trying to use classic Tolkien wizards. No. Yes. Um, they were basically working with this place called the Monroe Institute mm -hmm. to try to figure out if they could essentially understand astral projecting and figuring out yeah. what it is that if it's real and like what it is and how they could replicate it for military purposes. Yeah. And so the idea behind astral projection is that you can, it's usually through a sleep process, right? That, I mean, theoretically, that there's a kind of like sleep uh, that you kind of like kind of go into like a deep consciousness state where you can project your own consciousness mm -hmm. either into another space in the current timeline or more, most likely into another dimension in a different timeline. With the idea being that the universe is actually kind of made up of a layer, like imagine like a... I don't know, a layer cake or a, a, everyone likes funnel cake, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Layers and kind of, um, you know, tiers or I don't know, circles, right? Of different times and spaces, different dimensions, that there are dimensions kind of layered through and that you can kind of astral project into other ones and other dimensions. Um, and yeah, the CIA, the U.S. Army, they were conducting a bunch of research into this. And if, it's funny because if you look at the, like, doc, I mean, the Monroe Institute is, like, still around. I mean, like, people yeah. work with it. It has courses on all of this stuff. It's not too far away from transcendental meditation yes, practice. Yes, I was going to say that, yeah. But it it's is a bit a more different. intensive. It's very it's different. different. I would say it's like a third cousin. 
it's all related to the same things, but okay. So let me give you a little background and I don't want to spoil it too much, but a couple okay. big stories I have. Most of my show is like little stories from people. I haven't released any of the crazy episodes yet, but a couple of the big ones that like I've been working on for a while, one of them involves this clairvoyant mm. is like the best. She doesn't even call herself that. The w- the woman we talked about? I told, I told you about this person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's read... She's read me. I'm surprisingly very skeptical, even though I don't sound like it on the podcast, but she's read me like people I know. It's like kind of wild. It's it's wild. Mm. She's got it's not worth describing. It'll take too long. But anyway, she had like this awakening um, and I've talked to her at length about what happened to her like eight years ago. And essentially she describes it as like, OK, imagine like we're all like light bulbs with energy like a little dim light bulb. Imagine if one day it's like, you're like a Tesla coil and it's just like fucking like beaming into you, like scattering, like energy, just like shooting out of you uncontrollably receiving information. Like she just basically happened to her one day where she had this like awakening and she, she's described all of this in her own words to me. And we've talked at length, but it didn't, it didn't get spooky to me really until I, stumbled across these CIA documents and read about their research and I'm reading it and I'm like, this is exactly what she's described to me in her own lived experience. And she doesn't know about the CIA papers. I told her about this and what they are researching. Like she's described to me verbatim Mm -hmm. and what they're trying to do is what happened to her. And it's pretty interesting. And Liz, your description of the dimension stuff, I, I'm going to try to have a smarter person eventually than me, yeah. than me explain it to me, uh, the gateway process, like what they were thinking. But I think I would think of it instead of like the layers, it's actually not that weird when you think about it. Like, so animals, a lot of animals can see different light waves than us. Like, you know, I think yeah. spiders can see ultraviolet. A lot of them, and and we're discovering more all the time. So like, so they s- fundamentally see creatures differently than us. Like there's certain animals that have stripes that are only visible in ultraviolet light or infrared mm. and other animals just literally see the world different. They could see things that we don't see because we can't see ultraviolet. So theoretically, you know, another way to look at astral projecting is that it's possibly inherently something that we could do that we've right. just forgotten how to do or distract that we ourselves need to hone. from it. Yeah, and mm. then once it's once you can do it, it's sort of like like I think projecting in my understanding is almost like a confusing word because it's more of like right. receiving, you know? Like the stuff's <laughs> already there. Mm-hmm. I love that. You're just all of a sudden able to see it if that makes sense it or totally understand makes sense. it. Um and it's it's not that ridiculous. Um it sounds really heady but and they it's it's even weirder reading like how they think it would happen so like so transcendental meditation basically you're learning to turn off your left brain yeah you're like trying to put it to sleep that's what you use i've i kind of fell out but i used to do this i have oh, my really? adhd is too bad mm. <laughs> like yeah Los i don't like Angeles, sitting still baby. for oh yeah i almost went i've like Almost. I did it because of David Lynch. Like, Ath- you know. Me too. I almost yeah. did it because of David Lynch too. I was listening to the audiobook version of Learning to, is it called Learning to Fish or no something? Idea. Yeah. And I highly recommend that because he narrates it and then just listening to his voice is so entertaining. Literally. And I li- I used yeah. to live like not that far from the TM spot in Los Feliz. And so mm-hmm. I'd always that's pass where I it and I'd be like, damn, I should go. I'm always hanging out there trying to talk to girls. <laughs> <laughs> so when you do that, you're basically learning to turn off your left brain which controls like executive function like you know decision making kind of like the computer of your head you know it's Mm -hmm. all of the intelligence i guess and the right brain is obviously a creativity emotions um blah 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 so you kind of like use this mantra to turn off the left brain and just sort of like you're essentially trying not to think at all and when you attach um when you like hook a brain up to what is it like an EKG or whatever? Mm-hmm. What is that yeah. machine that, yeah, they've done this to people that are meditating and basically their, their left brain like does kind of go dark. So that's TM hypnosis, I believe is like turning off the left brain and a little bit of the right brain and like tapping into specific areas like that light up. Hmm. And then 
this is all to say that the gateway process, you're doing this type of meditation that they say takes years to learn, but you're, yeah. you're doing a type of meditation that your heart rate, and I'm sorry to anybody smarter than me that's listening and getting annoyed because I'm not a scientist, but your no heart rate- No one smarter than you listens to this podcast. Your heart rate reaches this rhythm, like a syncopated rhythm, essentially, that our, our heart normally beats at a chaotic rhythm. It's all over the place, you know? But you reach this level of meditation where it actually is like steady, reaches mm -hmm. a steady tempo, and your blood starts flowing at an even rate. It's no longer like crashing into each other. It's like a consistent flow, even and your heart's, flow. your heart's beating at a consistent rate, and it starts to affect your like brain fluid, I guess. Mm. This is I'm, this is from the CIA documents. I okay. I don't know anything about this myself, but that essentially you're doing this in a way that's able to activate a certain part of your brain that can mm -hmm. then perceive this stuff. And a spooky thing mm -hmm. is that it was also mentioned that like this same thing can accidentally happen to people who are like being hit with acoustic waves in the same pattern. Yes. I, so I've so heard I've, that like you this can happen to truck drivers and air people who work on AC ducts. Well, one of the imagine. big things with the Monroe Institute when I was like reading up about them, and this is, I thought about Young Chomsky a lot because what they were talking about is that they were, they were kind of trying to stimulate a lot of these processes through like, what is it? Bioral? Is that how you say it? Binaural, Binaural beats. Beats, but then they had. They said that they had like way more. That they're like that's old technology. Yeah, they, they were. They're like, but we can't really talk about the ones. It's like proprietary. But that they have these like insane sound systems and pre well, that that yeah. like move sound all over the place to kind of stimulate this process. Yeah, they have headphones that um, I guess produce like an electromagnetic pulse instead of sound waves. Mm. And um. I don't really understand binaural beats. I mean, I first heard of that because it would be like some shit you would download it on Kazaa when you were a kid or like, <laughs> yeah. remember uh, iDozer? I do not do you know, know. Oh my gosh. You was guys don't like know iDozer? Yeah, what's it was like, oh my God, I can't believe you haven't heard this. Okay, so no. iDozer was like a, a thing in the early 2000s and it was like high quality audio files that would supposedly scientifically engineered to replicate certain feelings of like drugs and things like that. So you would oh, download I, a dose okay, yes, and it'd be I like do cocaine, remember that. Yes, cocaine, I do remember DMT, that. acid. And I then tried I think the big that one, and I was like, the, mm, that thing's happening. The, the big one is hand of God or something like that. And oh, people would have shit. like these crazy stories of like, but the funny thing is that it's like, you know, you're supposed to do it on really good headphones. Like I think if you even believe the science of this, you need like next level sound systems. Mm. Well, I um, listened to some of the Monroe Institute tapes. Yeah, and uh, didn't work. I'm I'm the world's worst meditator. Actually, you know what? Oh yeah, I can be okay at it, but yeah, my brain's a little. I it's know. It's tough. Yeah. It's a really tough skill to but, learn. But um, and there's the, there's like tones and stuff they play during that. The the woman I'm working with, like that, kind of is the genesis of this really fascinating lady that I love. But um. It's funny. She she tells me and she believes that everybody can do this. That it's like, mm. you know, she's not she says like I'm not special. Everybody could learn to do this. Everybody could do this I love potentially. That. But it's funny cuz she does occasionally teach these like classes where she'll try to teach people to do it. Mm -hmm. And I went to one of them. I, it did not work. Mm. But what's interesting is that you do see like you see everybody trying it and then you see her do it and like no matter no matter where you sit on skepticism, you're watching and you're like, okay, she's doing something like something mm. is happening right now. Yeah. And then there's also this other element where like seeing the difference between her and the other class, it's kind of like Michael Jordan trying to teach a class on how to dunk to like kids. <laughs> and he's just like, all yeah, right, totally. you grab the basketball and then you dunk, yeah. just jump up and right. put it in the, hoop. <laughs> like, <laughs> which to be fair is how you do it. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, That's no, the, it's just step one, step two. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You just, you know, there's some limitations. Uh, you know, um, I, I can just to, as an aside here, I can I can dunk. Yeah, you're like Mike. Yeah, I've seen Liz you do has it. Seen me. Yeah, but yeah, yeah you, you have too. It. Yeah, ever since you got um, the ext Chad extendo surgery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I think it makes sense. Like, we might have lost people. I don't know what your audience is like. No but way. And if we did, good riddance. But, um, I mean, I think it makes sense lot. because the stuff that you have to like, I think, for the skeptics that are still hanging on listening. I mean, when you think and you understand that. 
like the way that we measure everything in the universe, right? Not to get to, like all like I don't know whatever, like science person or whatever. Twenty nine. Not palms. a science person, but you know, it's like time is time is just a, a you know arbitrary measurement of energy that's in motion. Everything in the universe is in motion, right? And we we kind of like force these markations in order to make sense and organize the, and narrativize that constant chaotic movement of energy, right? Mm -hmm. And put some limitations on it in order for in order to kind of like, you know, force it into a way that we can understand and make sense of the world. And so for to like kind of open that up, right? Or like dissolve those boundaries to be able to kind of understand and absorb the like totality of the universe and of being and and that means like in our world, in this dimension, in the other dimensions that we can't see, like you say, in like these ultraviolet or inaccessible energy fields, like to me, it makes sense, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And like the point you make about animal, I mean, I'm sure that there's like actually a lot of our listeners are going to be like, Fuck. I haven't talked crazy like this in a while. No. It's been a minute. But like, I actually do think that people can communicate with animals. And like that, you can you can like become and learn like mm. very sensitively how to be in tune with like other species and 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 I don't know. I think that you can access and like and um, like that your intuition can be like a muscle that you that you train and that you really like um, work at, and that that can be like part of it. I mean, if we're talking yeah. intuition, I have probably the greatest intuition of any man alive. We're, this is 100% talking about intuition. Like, that's yeah. all yeah. this is, basically. Because, like, even if you believe the Monroe Institute stuff, like, mm -hmm. you're not, these aren't, you're not becoming, like, gods. You just are getting some, like, even the best people, it's it's kind of still just, like, scattered info that they can even barely make sense of sometimes. Yeah. So we're not, like, superpowers, you know? It's, um like, we're still very limited, but it's mostly intuition. And that's, like essentially would be the step one of understanding this stuff. And and I think that's probably like the most relatable thing is uh, just intuition, like how you know something to be true before it happens mm. or something mm. like that. And um, I don't know. I think this, it definitely, there's probably people listening and be like, yo, what kind of, what kind of reefer are they smoking? But None. <laughs> We're, we don't do that here. Uh, dude, I guess we literally just smoked weed. Liz and I, I smoke mean, probably ew. an ounce a day. Uh, I think like... Is that a lot? Yeah. I think it's like... <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> now, after getting into this stuff, like, I'm just curious. And honestly, some of the biggest scientific breakthroughs have come from people that at first everybody thought they were completely insane. Sure. DNA is the well, first thing that comes to mind. I still think that's pretty crazy. Yeah. Oh, you're a, you're a DNA denier? No, I'm just joking. That'd be so sick. <laughs> Liz only believes in <laughs> RNA. She thinks my, DNA yeah. is fake. Uh, my yeah. thing with all this stuff is like, this is also what I think about some of the crazier conspiracy theories because I'm just like, what do you got to lose? Dude. Just get people, into it. Who cares? Yeah. Chill out. Um, Look a little. Open your mind, man. It's it's based, I mean, I'm thinking about this stuff all based in reality. It's like, yeah. you know, I don't I don't find this to be nonsense. And what's funny is that, you know, I was like, this was just not a factor in my life before. Like, you know, yeah, I now just it's hosted your whole a comedy life. We know podcast, a little bit about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not like I'm like a diehard, but what's funny now is like nothing pisses me off more than like the Neil deGrasse Tyson type people uh, that message uh, me. And it's like, like one person, I got one the other day. I don't mean to put this on blast, but I, I almost no, get- first and last name. Put it out there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and well, email address. <laughs> and I it's not that bad, premium. but it's, somebody was like, okay, uh, I was down with maybe you ex like talking about like spirits and residual energy or whatever, but like gin, like that's fucking stupid. Uh, I can't believe you're entertaining stuff from a made up religion and like blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, like made, like it's a hardcore, Sorry, like, um, which religion that's not made. I know. Right. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, like, <laughs> bro, everything's made up. What do you, we made it all up. Like yeah. what's well, not made up. Except for, one. um, except thank you. Yeah, it's um, not gonna say but it's which. it's funny when you like encounter those types of people, and it's like, all right, like where do you guys draw the like, where's the line for you? You're on board with spirits, but like, not we see that all another the time. another culture. Like this is yeah. literally the same yeah. thing, but observed from a different culture. Yeah, we it's see that all a, the time on the podcast. So people be like, oh, 
well, I was with you with the Epstein thing, but then, you know, I don't know. You mentioned it's funny, it's yeah. Hillary Clinton and Huda, Ada Baby, Huda. Huda? I mean, <laughs> Huda, Huda Amadine? <laughs> I gotta say, we're talking number system, zero to ten. It's just ten. funny. I mean, and On I, the, 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 trip? the Hillary yeah. eating babies definitely um, throws a curveball yeah. variable into what I'm talking about, but... Um, but with this stuff, it's like the close mindedness is like, yeah, it's just it's kind of frustrating. I mean, I don't need people to believe anything, but it's just it's just funny to encounter that type of person. Well, but it's like, all right, is, like whatever. And I think this is maybe a good place to wrap it up. But I think the you know, the thing is, is that when people are sending messages like that, it's sort of like, OK, well, you can be skeptical in your own like. I don't know. Like, like you're not doing a show, that, like you said, that's just reading Wikipedia articles or like debunking things yeah, with yeah, Neil yeah, deGrasse yeah. Tyson, the world's biggest bore and worst dinner party guest. Um, he ate everything when we had him over. <laughs> it's just I mean, a bad way to live just, your life. But you're it's also like... just, people have these experiences. And so it's like, you're being an asshole about like, this person had this insane, unexplained uh-huh. encounter with a broken man and then her husband... <laughs> Runs to the yeah. bed. Of course, majority is way out of Like, you have to give some of that weight. This was something that changed this person's life for, yeah, you know, like better or worse. Lying? This isn't like... Yeah. Yeah, and so, I don't know. I think that when it comes to this stuff, believe women. <laughs> That's what I say. <laughs> I mean, Liz, every person, every person I talk to, it's the same story. They're like... They all say the same thing. And that's kind of what I'm exploring with this show, but they all say the same thing. I didn't believe in this stuff till it happened to me is the number yeah, one. Totally. The other thing is that like they'll always say, I still don't believe in this stuff really. And then I'll be like, wait, what? Like why? Yeah. You just told me you saw a vivid ghost. They're like, okay, yeah, I mean, that did happen. But I mean, it's it's this weird cognitive dissonance and I don't blame mm-hmm. people. That's something I'm exploring with the mm. show is that when people do encounter this stuff, it's so mind-blowing and yeah. upsetting almost that they would rather just, you know, as, as soon as you have a look onto the other side, you kind of just want to go back to your simple life. And I understand that too. I mean, I've had a moment myself where I was like, dude, I don't want my, I liked my old life. I don't want to experience that. Like, yeah. um, so I'm just going to try to bottle it up and just forget about that. <laughs> like, yeah. cause it opens up too many questions. Right. Like it opens up too many questions, but that's the thing. It's like people don't believe this stuff until it happens to them. And then as soon as it does, you realize like, oh, my God, I want to forget this because I liked things when it was simple. Spooky. Would you, would you guys live in a house that someone had uh, recently died in? I would try to avoid it. I mean, look, the housing market is so crazy right now. Yeah, um, <laughs> It's true. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that renters are... Uh, anyone has any that many options? I would try to avoid that. Yeah, but I'm not trying. It depends to like, on the death. Yeah, All right, yeah, so yeah. my buddy won't mention him. Won't, won't, won't mention his name rather because I didn't ask him, but I'm sure he wouldn't mind. Um, he uh, sublet his apartment to a like kind of techie guy like 10, 12 years ago, I think <sighs> in in Brooklyn. Went on tour. While he's on tour, gets a call from his neighbor. It's like, hey, I think there's a dead body in your <gasps> apartment. Flies what? back to New York. There had been a dead body in the apartment. The body had melted. Melted? Some what? heat, baby. Been in there for a while. Wait, oh, wait, wait, no. wait, wait, wait. Bodies wait, wait. melt, Liz. I've seen it. What do you mean melt? Bodies kind of just melt. So rot. Yeah, kind of. But like, Advanced disintegration, advanced, probably. Yeah, it had, well, it had, there was decomposition. I told you about my experience with the dead body. Some, Yes. Which is, yeah, some, we didn't get some, to your ghost stories yet or whatever you have. Oh, yeah. Well, we, we will, but okay. Uh, the guy had leaving Las Vegas style gone out with oh, boy. duster, cases of dust off, and had overdosed on dust off and then melted into my friend's uh, couch and his, his floor. No way. Stayed Jesus, in the apartment. dude. Got rid of the couch, but I guess he just put a rug over the stain. <gasps> Yeah. I couldn't do that. Is this well, owned or it's rented San apartment? Francisco's Rent, a very this tough is a rented market. apartment. Oh, yeah. definitely switch. Yeah. I think he had a good deal. I mean, yeah, it's tough. You know? <laughs> That's um, so funny. I mean, I do hear those. Those are the other types of story I really like, is where like somebody experiences something horrifying and then they kind of stick around. Like 
one of my favorites, and I'll probably put this out again. This is like an old interview, but this guy told me a story about this girl who he dated that like freaked him out. She was weird from the mm-hmm. jump, but then she also said she had some weird spirit stuff going on. And he woke up and I witnessed like oh, no. one of the craziest poltergeist type situations. <gasps> what? What he happened? Said, he said he woke up thinking somebody broke in the house and he hears like basically a person like destroying. He would he described it as like a person destroying the bathroom like he thought it was like an angry ex-boyfriend or something. And she's he's like ready to go in there and be a tough guy. And she's like, stop, like, like, give it light. Like, um, imagine a bright white light. Imagine a bright white light. And then like as the fans start spinning or something like no. shit's happening in the room crazy. and he's getting more scared of her <gasps> saying this no. shit. She's like, she's like, imagine, like imagine a bright white light, imagine a bright white light or something oh like that. Oh my God. And he wakes up and then he goes into the bathroom. Nobody's in there. It's fucking destroyed. And like, I think he bolts out of the house or something. Like he eventually yeah. talks to her and like, it's apparently something that happens to her a lot. And then, so anyway, at the end of the story, he's like, what? so dude, like, so, but the Red funniest part is he's like, ever, he's like, dude, so like we, we ended up breaking up a few months later and I'm like, wait, a few months later. And he's like, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, wait, you didn't like end it there. And he's like, well, dude, like she was really hot. Uh, yeah, classic, that. I classic, stupid. I mean, same thing happened to me. Like, I, mean, I, I was laughing in his face. I'm like, bro, <laughs> you were going back there to smash. And he's like, you got to understand, yeah. dude. We'll I mean, same ghost. thing happened to me, Liz. One time I was uh, in Presidio. I don't know. You've been at SF, right, Jack? Yeah. You know, like the Presidio, like the kind of like green area. It's technically federal yeah. land. Yeah. Were you walking... at the Pet Cemetery? No, I wasn't. Although that is a great place. If you are in San Francisco, great place to go on a date is the Pet Cemetery. Yeah, classic there. date. Um, but I don't think, is that technically the Presidio? That's like underneath the freeway? Isn't it kind yeah, of the like Presidio? Pres- it's Presidio in my head. It's beneath the regular I don't graveyard. Know. Anyways, I'm walking through, not walking through the pet cemetery, not walking through the graveyard, just walking down the streets. People live there in the Presidio trying to get to the Presidio bus. And I meet a girl there, or there's just like another girl walking down the street that I, I talk to, um, get her number, and notice she had this kind of like choker on. And, you know, crazy enough, we hang out, we go on a date, we go to. Uh, to what? Beats Burgers. You just pick up that girl? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh and uh, you know, we start we start necking, and I I try oh, to take her choker this off. This is fake. Head falls off. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I was excited See, where this, this was going. Prankster. No, 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 no. I wouldn't. I would. I wouldn't talk. Wait, no so, but do you not have any real ghost stories? Uh, I have not ever encountered <gasps> my friend Trent's house when I was younger. We thought was haunted, but it was also just because his stairway was really dark. Um. Uh, that was, and that, I think the dark stairway kind of scared me. But he said, I think he said he saw a ghost. I should hit him up about that. Uh, I have, uh, uh, no, you know what? I, I haven't really. I mean, I told you, I've said this on the show before. Like, I stole basically everything from um, from Graham Parsons Memorial mm. in Joshua Tree. Like, I stole like his entire shrine, all of the <laughs> cigarettes and money and alcohol yeah. people left there. Uh, because I needed it, but uh, no ghost from there. And I was staying in the room that he like died in, or like stayed. I don't in. think Graham Parsons hangs out there. I think everyone's too fucking annoying. He's in heaven because there's he's like a hell of a band up there. He's like, oh my god, my fans are such fucking losers. Why yep. do they wear all these hats? The grievous angel. Uh, but I, you know, I have not really. No, I don't actually really get scared. I of mean. This. You well, know you haven't seen one, so stories, how could you but... get scared? Yeah, I know, I know secondhand ghost stories, um, but no, I once saw a really scary spider. Yeah, so you can't Damn. get scared of ghosts because you've never seen classic one. Classic Halloween decor type stories. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. I said, I, I do think it would be so fucking funny to like ruin my podcast by doing mm-hmm. stories about like somebody who sees a jack-o'-lantern yeah, and it winked floating in the street. <laughs> so Liz, <laughs> you teased this at the beginning. You have encountered ghosts. Yeah. You've actually never told me this. Okay, so this was like maybe, um, I can't remember, maybe like six or seven years ago. Mm -hmm. It was around Thanksgiving. Yeah. And I was visiting my friend who lives on Bainbridge Island, which is outside of Seattle. You have to like take the little ferry boat there. And she lived, I mean, she still lives there, but in a different place. But this was like, it was like a very secluded little house. And her room was on the second floor. I was staying in a room kind of like off the kitchen on the first floor. And there were 
like windows all around. It was a very cool room. It was like you walk in, the bed was right on the left, and then there was just sort of like three walls of windows. So the bed was facing a full wall of window, almost like an enclosed porch or something, but it was like actually a bedroom. Mm. And it was in that kind of like Pacific Northwest, like, yeah. you know, there's kind of like green pottery you know, everywhere and walnut. And it's I very hate like. The Pacific Northwest, yes. Yeah. A little like arts and craftsy. Um, Anyways, very cozy, but I was staying. I was staying there, and it was like the middle of the night. I woke up, and I looked. I think it was like one or two o'clock in the morning, and I woke up and I couldn't move. Like I had the, uh, this weird feeling, like I couldn't move. Like I, and it wasn't like I was being like pressed down or held down, but mm. it was like my brain couldn't get my arm, like my body, to move. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Like the connection, the mind body connection, yeah. like was frozen. And I f- started freaking out because that's a, like doesn't make sense as a feeling. And I look over, and at the foot of the bed, there is an old woman sitting. Oh, God. She's sitting at the end of the bed, like that. facing the window to my left. Yeah. And I just, it was the, it was the craziest. I was like gassed and I couldn't. Like, I couldn't scream, which, yeah. by the way, is, like, something that I think about all the time, which is, like, oh, my God, in this moment, I couldn't, like, my body couldn't scream, which is a yeah. very scary feeling. Um, and I just was, like, <gasps> and I remember reaching to, like, try to touch it. And at that moment, it kind of turned to look at me, but it was this, like, shadowy figure. I mean, you have to understand, like, so... With the windows, it was like pitch black blue. The yeah. star, there's so many fucking stars because mm-hmm. there's no lights out on Bainbridge Island. Yeah, like it's yeah. just pitch black. You're just right up in the the sky. That's all you're seeing, and it kind of like I was like trying to reach out for it, but it's like really fucking dark in this room. I like can't breathe. It kind of turns, and then I just like close my eyes, open them, and it was gone. And I jolted out of bed and I ran up to my friend's room where she and her dog were. And I like creaked open the door. And then I was like, what the fuck am I doing? I'm not going to wake my friend up. Like, this is insane. What just happened? I don't know. And then I'm just like running through my head and I'm like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And I just like got back in the bed and I was just sitting there like, and I I was like saying out loud, like, please go away. Please go away. Please go away. And I was like so scared. And then I finally fell back asleep. But I remember it so, so vividly. And it was this woman who like, like was like crone looking. Like yeah. I don't know how Ugh. to describe it. Like dark crone-ish, like um like a whistler painting. Like that's what it looked yeah, like. In, yeah. Um I'm I'm opening fire. Yeah, I mean it was just like sitting there calmly and I couldn't and I couldn't scream. That's all I rem- and oof, ugh. That is very yeah. spooky. And I will say that that does sound a lot like sleep paralysis. How much do you know about sleep paralysis? Yeah, I do, but I know, and then the other thing that yeah. it could, and I don't mean to be to poo poo, because I I don't think this is poo pooing anymore, but like, it could also be hypnagogic hallucinations, something mm. I used to have. It's related to insomnia, but you used to hallucinate you, in the middle of the night, Jack. Yeah, I thought I told you that. I would wake up. It, for me, it was in the morning, and I think that's like hypnopompic hallucinations. It's called. It might be the other way around, but. I my sleep was so bad that I would wake up and have waking hallucinations while I'd walk around for like a minute. What? It was fucking insane. For me, I would see my house on fire. Like it would be a, a realistic fire starting in my home. Like it would start Jesus I would usually Christ. see it like I would see smoke billowing up from like one of the doorways and then like Boy Scout mode kind of kick in. I would like literally I'm awake, so I'm like doing this stuff. I'd like go feel like put my the back of my hand up to the door, like yeah. feel it like eventually start like fighting a fire and then I would, it would just disappear before my eyes. Mm. But so upon the diagnosis of this, I started going on these forums and like, I realized I was lucky because other people saw really fucked up stuff. And one of the things people saw would be like an old woman in the corner of their room. Interesting. Yeah. But you know, so I would, so, so that's one of the things and sleep paralysis that makes me like I've I've never had that before or any kind of insomnia. Well, yeah. And, and, and I mentioned that in like one of the episodes and I, I also say that like I didn't think this was paranormal ever because like to get to that point you have to 
you really fuck yourself up. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. yeah. like it's it's not like that was just all of a sudden. This was like a year of me knowing like I am not living right. I feel like yeah. shit every day. I have I'm dizzy when I drive. Like I can't like <laughs> Oh, yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. painful experiencing peripheral vision. Like it's bad. Like, um, so yeah, I never thought it was paranormal, but then sleep paralysis too is like it's one of those things that I used to write it off as not paranormal, but then somebody recently pointed out to me, like, yeah, they don't know what it is. He's like, yeah, Science that's, science I, just I, named it. They don't know what it is. Like they just mm. gave it a name. They're like, Oh, it's sleep paralysis. They still don't know what it is. I mean, there's yeah, some like, interesting theories about it, but you never know. I mean, I don't know. I just remember that happening. And, it was or very scary. Or it has nothing to do with anything, and it's just like you just saw some kind of spirit. Or maybe it's something where, like, sort of what we were talking about. Or before, like a waking dream or something. Who knows? Yeah. Or or Liz, like, and not to get too heady, but when we're talking about the the gateway process type stuff. Mm. So, and I mean, this is I know this is like kind of a little much, but. Part of me wonders, like, are there just kind of like these moments or states that we could briefly get into where we're just seeing things that we that are there, but we normally mm. can't see them, right? Like, we're yes. talking about the folded dimensions and um, where it's like maybe you reach this rhythm or state when you were kind of relaxing and going to bed where you all of a sudden were able to see something that your brain normally isn't able to mm. see, right? That's, I like, like that. That's comforting. That's, um, it's How more... How is that comforting? Because I think that means that there's a sort of like, we have an ability in us to be much more sensitive than we can even comprehend. And I think yeah. that that's like a very beautiful, or like thinking could, about that and what that kind of, the like potentials there, I think are very, very heartening. And maybe it's not, um, and maybe it's not even like, a layer of reality. Maybe it's like an enhanced intuition where you're like mm. picking up on just the fact that somebody used to live there that looked like, yeah. or I don't know, maybe it's some just, distor- it was a cr- creepy woman, but <laughs> I well, have no idea. I have no idea, but it's like, yeah. it could be so many things. I know I'm definitely sound like I'm smoking the reefer again. For no, sure, I love it. I'm very open in a lot of ways uh, because in some ways not, but, and I want to hear your other story, but, like the amount that I get, that's why I started doing this because I was yeah. doing it for fun. I was like, let's get a funny ghost story to tell on you, but still. And then I asked people, I'm like, hey, does anybody have a spooky story? And I got hundreds of terrifying submissions about like serious eyewitness things, crazy stuff. I talked to a listener that got human trafficked, not paranormal, yeah. but like that's, yeah, it that escalated too. to the point where I had to start this. And now in the last, honestly, that, article that just came out really amplified it but like all of a sudden like all these people that are close to me um in my life that are just what you call very hyper normal people i would say have come forward i mean like oh yeah i have like seen this crazy thing that was on your show i've never talked to anybody about it and i'm having like family friends who are the most normal people of all time telling me like oh yeah i saw like this demon one time huh mm. And just like, and it's it's just wild because it's like, it's funny just what people kind of keep to themselves, right? And yeah. then never talk to anybody about. Um, there's so much of it. So many people are seeing this stuff that it's like, all right, something's happening. Like something's going on. This is such a huge population. Even if we're, even if these people are crazy, we're all crazy in the same way. So <laughs> maybe we need to figure that out too. <laughs> like, right? Well, I think that's a fantastic place. To wrap this bad boy up. Okay. Yeah. Where can everyone... Everyone can listen to the podcast. Where? Where? Podcasts Wherever you sold? find podcasts. It's <laughs> called Otherworld. Um, maybe you could put a link to it in the description if you're we, feeling you nice. Know what? You know what? We are going to do We're that. We're going to do that. Yeah. So this is the first season. I'm actually calling it season zero. Um, I was supposed to do... I was originally going to do like six episodes, but it's a lot more than that now. I think I have like 17 already recorded. Oh my gosh, fantastic. And there might be more, but I'm going to have to draw a line at some point. (laughs) Like seriously, (laughs) because I kind of keep finding some stuff. And um, yeah, I'll have to draw a line at a certain point. Be like, all right, this season's done. 
Well, we're so excited, and we know our listeners are going to keep an open mind, and they should check it out. We'll put a link in in the show notes. And Jack, thank you so much for coming. Thank on you. The show. Thanks for Jack having me. I hope they don't think I'm crazy. Lantern. Wow, Brace, I learned a lot. Me too. And it really reminds me of a story. Oh, no more stories. That please. happened to me when I was younger. Mm. <sighs> well, okay, I'm trying to remember the plot of Scary Movie 2, and I can't right now. Did it have a plot? Oh, no. My favorite story. All right, so, by the way, listeners, Liz has never even heard of, let alone read, any of the scary stories to tell in the dark books. Yeah, I don't even know what that is. So I've been trying to repeat them all day as if they happened to me to scare her. But one but of the, I my, sussed them out real quick. My favorite story from those books is a story that is just literally not a scary story, mm. but it's a, but it's told in that way. So it's like a couple went to Mexico and purchased a dog, a rare breed of dog from a dog vendor in Guadalajara. They bring it back, and it's the dog acts funky. He's like always like sniffing around in the trash and like scurrying. He's like more scurrying than walking. But you know, he's a he's a short haired Chihuahua, and they're like, all right, you know, that's just like it's a unique dog. It's the kind of dog you buy in Guadalajara. And then one day, I can't remember what else happens in the story, but like someone looks at the, the dog and it's like, actually, you just got a big ass rat. Oh! I feel like that's vaguely racist. No, nah, yeah, I kind of do too because I'm like, I don't know Mexicans are gonna sell you a rat. I, however, I will. Who would think that a rat is a dog? Yeah, um, uh, I don't know. I mean, I could, I you know what? I bet I could trick someone to think a rat is a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I think I could do that. You think you could? I think I got a big enough rat. I could do that. You know what's the type of guy you don't see anymore? What? The guy who performs the rat. Yes. Well, so there was in San Francisco a guy, yeah, the guy who with had the, cat, the dog, uh, the dog and the rat. And the yeah, to those who have never seen it, it was a dog. This was crazy. Cat on top of it. And then on top of that motherfucker, a rat. And they drove him out of San Francisco cuz they said he was drugging the dogs or drugging the animals. I got to be real. You think he was? I uh, yeah, he probably. Was. I thought they were just How all friends. A rat is just chilling with all the garbage in the city. Man, that doesn't really make much sense. Yeah. Um, but it's true. You don't see a lot of like traveling guys, rap performers. No, I did. I this is not a joke. I did lose my virginity to one of those people who had a rat like scurrying around their sweatshirts. <laughs> Remember those people what? when you were younger? She no. had a hairless rat. She no. also had a bald ass head herself. You and the bald women. I mean, I was fourteen. You know, it's you know didn't. All right. Well, dear listeners, have a happy Halloween. And remember. Don't cook with too much garlic, or I'll suck your D. <laughs> <laughs> My name, of course, is both the doctor and the monster, Hitler. <laughs> I'm Liz. And of course, we are joined by producer Young Chomsky. The podcast is <laughs> called True Anon, Anon Master. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. 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 B